Darkstalkers Chronicle The Chaos Tower is a fighting game developed by Capcom for the PlayStation Portable. It was released in Japan on December 12th, 2004, slightly later in the US on March 17th, 2005, and lastly in the PAL region on September 1st, 2005. It is a port of a Japan-only Dreamcast game. In Japan, the first Darkstalkers game is called Vampire. There were multiple Vampire titles released over the years, and among them was Vampire Chronicle for Matching Service, the game that was ported over to the PSP. A riveting title. They apparently called it that because it used Capcom's Matching Service online system, which is Capcom's matchmaking network for the Dreamcast. Make sure you drop me a like if you enjoy this review. <laughs> The controls in this game are very responsive, which is what you would hope for in a fighting game. So they are very responsive, they're very tight. It feels like every button input has an immediate reaction. And yes, I am button mashing, but every hit I land on my opponent feels very satisfying. Let's talk about some of the different modes in the game. So the first mode I'm going to talk about is tower mode. Personally, this is my favorite mode in the game. It's not a new concept. This concept has been done in a lot of different fighting games, but it's still really fun to me. You fight in a series of 1v1 battles to climb the tower to try to reach level 100. It is challenging because you only get to choose three fighters, and if you lose with any one of them once, you don't get to fight with them again. They're just out. You can't use them again. And if you lose all three, it's game over. One thing about this mode I do wish is that there were more bonuses while climbing the levels of the tower. For example, maybe they could throw you a health pack after you beat level 35, or a free character revive after level 50, etc. If you can keep all three of your fighters alive, the other two that you aren't currently fighting with will heal a tiny bit after every battle, which is nice, but for me I think they should heal more because I suck. I feel like it's just a tiny minuscule amount of health that doesn't do much. I can only reach level 40 typically if I'm lucky, so reaching level 100 is pretty much a pipe dream at this point. I do enjoy unlocking illustrations in the tower mode, which are really cool. Um, I believe they're hand-drawn art of all the characters, very cool. There are also rules in some of the battles. For example, no punches allowed and conditions. For example, if you win the fight with an EX move, you can jump up the tower a few levels, helping you climb a lot faster. Just don't ask me how to do an EX move, I cannot figure it out for if my life depended on it. Even people online were complaining about how hard it is to master those EX moves. Uh, there's apparently like a Z formation combo that you have to master in order to pull it off. I mean, maybe to some people it's really easy to do, but I still cannot figure it out. Next, I'm going to talk about the arcade mode. I was actually a bit disappointed that it only took me about 20 minutes to beat the arcade mode. It was pretty easy as well. There is a difficulty setting in the game, which is nice. I could just crank up the difficulty if I wanted to, but I think my main point is that there are not enough fights in this mode. There are only seven like battles, that you only fight seven people. I don't mean to make it sound all bad, it is a great way to train and get good without committing to the tower mode. Before the battle begins, the player can choose between normal, auto, turbo, or auto and turbo. Auto being short for auto block, and turbo relating to how fast your characters move in game. Additionally, different playstyles can be chosen DS for Darkstalkers, NW for Night Warriors, DS3 for Darkstalkers 3, and DS3 SP for Darkstalkers 3 Special. These are all the different games that were released over the years. I think for newcomers to the franchise, like myself, this can be very confusing. I can never remember what most of the selections affect in the actual gameplay. During during your fighting. I do think it was cool that they added this. It gives a lot of variety to the gameplay. Chronicle is where you can view the illustrations, um, the pictures I mentioned before. It also has movies which reveal even more lore about the characters in a short movie form. They're not heavily animated or anything like that. You're not going to get like CGI animations, but I think the art is still well done in the movies and they're fun to watch. And all kinds of different sounds and background music that you unlock by playing the game. Network is where you could play the game online. It has infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode, so you could also link up and battle your friends. 
trends. The training mode is where you can practice perfecting your skills. For me, I personally prefer just training by the playing the arcade mode, but I am glad this mode is available if you need to practice moves with a dummy NPC that doesn't fight back. You can try to master those EX moves. And lastly, I want to talk about the options because there were actually several pretty cool options in the game. You can change the difficulty level, the damage level, the timer speed, the game speed, and more. You can also change up the screen with a wide mode and a normal mode. To me, the wide mode looks great and much better than the normal mode. It doesn't look stretched out or anything, and it covers the whole PSP screen, which is, it just looks really good. I like to see how far I can make it in the tower mode, or if I'm pressed for time, the arcade mode is great for jumping in and getting some fighting action on the go. The character roster is incredible. They are all awesome looking and some of the most unique looking characters out there. There are three unlockable characters, but two of them are more or less unplayable avatars that only really dictate who you fight as and have a few cosmetic change-ups. And the other is a version of Bishaman, this um, awesome samurai, that loses certain abilities and gains others, so it just kind of tweaks his character a little bit. To unlock the secret characters, you press a button combination at the select screen and voila, they are unlocked. Which is fine, but for me, I really enjoy the reward of earning unlockable fighters by winning battles. Remember to stay tuned to see if this game is worth your time to play and feel free to check out my other PSP game reviews I have quite a few on this channel So let's talk about the graphics in this game. So three seconds into the game, I love the art style. The animations are so well done in this game. I enjoy the animations when you get a victory. They're very interesting and they portray a lot of lore about the characters. And I think the lore adds depth to the characters, especially for a fighting game. For example, I was playing with, uh, I think it's pronounced Sienko. I probably, hopefully that's how it's pronounced. And I won the fight. After I won, it takes you to a still shot of your character with a quote where she said something like, did I meet you somewhere? before, perhaps before I died, which tells me she is either a ghost or a living corpse of some kind, and it just made me want to know more about her, and that happened with several characters. Bishaman has a demon armor that he can't control, which is pretty interesting. It has a face and everything. It looks pretty badass. And there is just entire posts online about the character lore, which is great. You can actually read up, like, I'm not sure if it's all fan-made or if it's canon or whatever, but there's a lot of lore and it's very fun to read. And another thing I have to mention about the graphics, I couldn't complete this review without mentioning the little Shiba dog. <laughs> it's so awesome. He just pops out when the battle's over. So yeah, I really don't have a single complaint about the graphics and the art in this game. The stages are super detailed and it's got dark tones in it it's just aesthetically pleasing um kind of gross at times the the last battle with jetta where there's a giant like baby and it's called like something fetus or other i was like oh my gosh and it like opens its eyes and everything starts shaking like it's just super creepy and <laughs> wouldn't have it any other way all right so let's move on to talk about the music and the sound in this game <laughs> PSP port of the game included music from every Darkstalkers entry. The main musical composer, Tetsuya Shibata, worked on over 20 Capcom titles, so it's no surprise that the music is very good. It was in good hands. Some of the other titles Shibata worked on include Monster Hunter, Devil May Cry, Power Stone, and much more. Straight out of the gate, the music is very enjoyable in my opinion. The piano in the intro is particularly good. I really enjoy the style of music in the fighting stages themselves as well. I've heard people compare a few things about this game to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and it definitely gives me those vibes as well. So when it comes to the music and the sound in the game, I don't find too many complaints. I think all the sounds are very cool when you're fighting. I really like the sound of, um, I think it's QB, when you lunge forward and an enemy, she makes a really cool like noise <laughs> that I like to listen to. And that happens pretty much with all the characters. They all make unique, cool sounding noises, and the music is just on point for the stages, as well as the, like I said, the intro and it's very cool to me that you can listen to all of the tracks in the um, gallery, the chronicle mode. You can just play music and just chill and just change the song whenever you want and it's really cool. It's very chill. I've actually sat there listening to the music in that mode and it's a very it's very cool that they added that. All right, let's talk about the replayability. Quiet. Quiet. 
I give this game 5 out of 5 on replayability. For me, the tower mode is the main thing I keep coming back to try and conquer. As I mentioned before, I can only get to like level 40, so there's always room for improvement there. After playing this game for a while, you start to learn how each character plays and what they're weak against and what they're strong against. You want to start picking some more like tank-like characters if it's, you know, a heavy hitter tank character that you're up against, etc. So there's really strategy involved in the game as well. Now, a complaint I have about the replayability is that I wish there was a longer arcade mode, and I know I mentioned this before, um, I just wish there was something to incentivize me to play it more. Nothing really happens when you beat the arcade mode, to my knowledge. I mean, I could be wrong. There's just a little cutscene of um, Jeddah, the main like villain in the game. I struggle to come up with complaints about the replayability, though. This game is a lot of fun to come back to time and time again for me. I mean, I, I just wake up, pretty much play it every day, and have just as much fun just fighting over and over. It's a ton of fun. And the question you've been waiting for this entire review, is this game worth your time? This game, in my opinion, is 100% worth your time. The art style is phenomenal. I can't stress that enough. The fights are quick and action-packed. The character roster is robust. The music is great. I can see myself coming back to this game years down the line whenever I have a random craving for a fighting game on my PSP. Yes, it does happen. And Tekken Dark Resurrection is my normal go-to, but that might be replaced by Darkstalkers now. It is nice to have another great fighting game on the portable system, and for any game collection, Collector out there, especially if you are specifically beefing up your PSP game collection. This game is an absolute must own in my opinion. If you made it this far in the video, make sure to leave a comment. Tell me if you have a game collection. Let me know. Are you trying to collect games for a specific console? I would love to hear it. So let me know. Until next time, peace.